this so I can share this with my other team members? Uh, no, no, that'd be great. Okay. That's great. Um, okay, Wes, so yeah, um, thanks for reaching out and responding. So tell me about your interest in... So you're the, the faculty advisor for the club, or... Sorry, sorry. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. You, you, I could hear you, but you, uh, you froze up for a second, so oh. I, I missed something. Okay. No, I'm asking you. So, are you the faculty advisor for the club, for the open source club? Yeah. So we're a little bit of a, a strange beast. Um, yeah, it's an open source club. Yeah. Uh, it's an open source club, but it's also a an academic uh, uh, center. So uh -huh. we. Uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, from that standpoint, I'm, I'm the, uh, my position, my actual title is director, but I'm both the faculty advisor uh, for the graduates, uh, for the undergraduates, um, and I'm also the, uh, the person who uh, assigns grades and, mm. uh, and keeps the academic side working. Um, so, mm. you know, it's a, a bit of a, like I said, it's a bit of a weird thing. Club room. Year. Um, every semester, we essentially uh, offer it as a uh, independent study, so students can take it and participate in uh, in open source uh, research and development, mm -hmm. and get uh, free elective credit for it. I so, see. yeah. So you know, they they do that. We have a lot of students that that participate even when they're not getting credit. Uh, we do offer some paid positions every year, um, and uh, we have projects. Most of our projects are homegrown, mm -hmm. uh, in that they're, they're interests of the student body. So uh, you'll see a lot of things if you if you go to our website, you'll see a lot of things that, uh, that are uh, um, specific to RPI. Although we're you know, we're trying to to get mm -hmm. some of them uh, available externally or, or or get external interest, um, but we do have students every year who work on uh, different uh, open source projects in the wild. We have a couple working with uh, IBM this semester. We have some working with uh, OpenAI Gym, which is a uh, it, it's a, a initiative to train um, competitive neural nets or uh, you know uh, competitive AIs uh, to to, uh, to specific tasks. Mm -hmm. um, so you know that that's kind of where we fit. Um, our charter is basically we allow students to pick projects, uh, either pick or found projects. Um, Now there we go. Okay, that yeah, yeah. that did it. Sorry, pick or found projects um, for yeah. students. Yep. Yeah. So and you know we track them over the course of the semester and and uh, end up getting them uh, giving them uh, a grade based on you know based basically on that's kind of our you know in broad strokes what we what we actually do. Um, we run it as a uh, as a seminar slash uh, group meeting course. Mm -hmm. So once or twice a month, we'll have people come in and talk to us, uh, get together in a large group in a, in a um, lecture hall setting. Other than that, we're broken up into uh, small groups of uh, three to four projects each. Mm -hmm. And the students kind of uh, are forced to, to collaborate for a couple of hours a week before they go off and do their open source stuff on their own. Yeah, so that, That's kind of what we said. I mean, that, that's in broad strokes what, how, we're, how we're organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how many students do you have right now in the program? So, I think we're right around. Uh, so I think we have 180 enrolled. So 180 students taking it for credit this semester, and that's fairly typical. We probably have another 20 who, will, for, for uh, we call it for fun, but just yeah. you know maintaining their projects and working with us without uh, without getting a grade or without getting paid. So uh -huh. pretty close to 200 is, is a standard semester. And one out of the 180 or 200, most of them are working on 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 RPI. Is it RPI? Yeah, most RPI. Yeah, yeah, uh, RPI rents. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, most of them are working on on projects specific to themselves. We have a couple of uh, of big ones. Um, we have something called the shuttle tracker. Which actually has hardware embedded on the uh, on the campus shuttle network that can show you uh, you know 
where the shuttle currently is, uh, estimated time to where you know to where you are, um, which is you know yeah. important in the winter time. Yeah, uh, we have a project called Submitty, which is used by um, well, it's used heavily by the CS department, but it's becoming more used by uh, by other departments, including uh, ECSC, electrical and computer science and engineering. Um, it, it, it's a homework server. Um, maybe I'll I'll pop my uh, camera off and see if we can get a better throughput. Uh, but you know, it, it's basically a homework submission server slash grader slash uh, 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 public forum kind of uh, mm -hmm. application. Uh, we have uh, our our own website is run by a by a, an Arcos project called Observatory. Uh, we have something called Yax, uh, our SIS system, student information system on campus is a old uh, old technology it doesn't really it allows students to sign up for course but it doesn't allow them to do a good job planning their their semester or their multiple semesters here so we have a, a tool called yaks that is a visual uh, representation of their schedule that's very popular with the students almost every student uses it to form their schedule before they go in and actually uh, uh, add it um, so th those are you know some of the bigger ones we have one uh, called seesaw um, that's actually a project working with a professor here on campus um, to uh, monitor water levels, automatically monitor, monitor, monitor water levels in South Africa uh, using uh, uh, computer vision research and, uh, and uh, um, crowdsourcing. Um, so yeah, so that, you know, we have a, a bunch of projects going on. I think we have close to 30 projects this semester. Most of them, you know, I'd say probably 25, 22, somewhere in that range, are local initiatives, and then we have another, you know, five to ten that are uh, that are working with, you know, broader communities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing active de developers two, two eighteen active projects forty four, past developers about a thousand. That's that's correct about. Uh, the, the the past developers is out of date. I I haven't. It's probably closer to uh, eighteen hundred right now. I didn't okay. update that for the last couple of semesters. Yeah. But, but yeah, and, and but that that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Th this okay. semester looks sounds really. Cool. Well, I was I'm surprised about the forty four. That's more than I. I have to take a look at that. <laughs> that's more yeah. than I expected, but it's it's quite possible. We have a number of uh, two and three person projects. I normally try to get them at four to six, uh, but we have a number of. Uh, Two and three person projects this semester, and that's probably where the uh, the, the big numbers coming from. Yeah, and some of the paid projects are they by outside companies or that's in house as well? Uh, we have done outside companies before. Um, one of the issues with outside companies and paid projects is, is simply that we want it to be an open source project, so we're kind of uh, leery about you know about having uh, our our students be employees. Um, so mostly it's it's in-house money um, you know some of it was a lot of it was donated by uh, by Red Hat yeah. um, for us to use to support these projects not necessarily Red Hat projects um, and then we also we were actually start, uh, started by a, a million dollar grant by Sean O'Sullivan who is a, an RPI alumnus um, mm -hmm. but that was about that was a uh, 14 or 15 years ago now yeah started with a uh... yeah What's what's a license? Do you have a license requirement for the product generated in Arcos? Um, we require an open source license, and we uh, kind of defaulted to the OSI standard, uh, just because it's easy, it's trackable, um, it's it's well supported, yeah. relatively well known, yeah. um, and we have a relationship with with uh, uh, Patrick Masson is uh, is his business. He's the uh, A director at our, at OSI, his business card says I think San Jose, California, but he's actually in the Albany area. So we get him to talk to us quite often. Oh. Um, so we we think that's a, a reasonable compromise. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're also OSI and Oshawa Open Source Hardware Association compliant ourselves. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's excellent. So yep. um, yeah, I mean, I was going to ask you how how you would see collaboration happening if we work on different open hardware projects. Now, of course, there's plenty of open software in our work as well, but some of the things we can offer is, I mean, first of all, I can come in, if you guys want to invite me for 
for a presentation. We can start. I mean, ideally, what, what we're trying to go off go after is, is somewhat of a, an open classroom initiative where it's about collaboration on larger problems by getting a number, a large number of chapters involved so that we all collaborate actually not on individual projects, but on the same project so that what we tackle can be something greater. In fact, uh, audacious projects, kind of like what we do at Open Source Ecology. Have you seen my TED talk on a, on a work on a global village? Yeah. Construction said, yeah, that's the nature of the work we do. And we try to ask ourselves what are important questions that we, we can solve with technology, which then relates to social and social issues. Um, for, so for so the, let me uh, yeah. jump in for a second. I mean, you know, part of what I'm interested in, we do have some hardware projects. They're not uh, large scale build the tractor type of projects. Yeah. But they, are, they are smaller scale projects, you know. And, and we, we're also working, you know, what you're talking about is something we're aspiring to. Uh, with regard to getting multiple universities, we, I'm part of a, a group called, uh, well, Teaching Open Source um, includes a number of, uh, like uh, Nassau College, um, Dickinson, uh, Muhlenberg, a lot of small c colleges in the Northeast. Yeah. Um, you know, who are trying to band together and do this? It's it's a matter of of reaching critical mass. Uh, we we uh, we get together once or twice a year to talk about about strategies and and we work together to develop develop curriculum and stuff. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Um, so, for example, what when you say larger projects, what what kind of larger projects do you have in mind? Do you do you have anything specific or? Well, uh, the the seesaw project is is certainly something that could become uh, larger. Uh, we have a project called Yaks, which uh, we've actually almost gotten into NYU. NYU is, is one of the places. NYU and Hunter College are both. Uh, uh, we have associates there. Um, you know, we, we've tried to get um, both of those projects into uh, NYU. We, we've tried to get uh, Yaks into NYU. Um, the problem is the, the, the semester boundaries. We lose we lose the momentum. Uh, every time we change semesters, um, you know, we have right. to find make new contacts at NYU, and, and so we, we haven't been completely successful. But that's the kind of thing trying to take the software either developed there and bring it here, or developed here and bring it there, and try to grow a community uh, that way. Yeah, yeah, excellent. And for us, I mean, we're just trying to get this started. Like, we don't have any universe formal university chapters. We have a collaboration with the London International Academy, which is a high school. But the, the Global mm -hmm. Classroom Initiative is something new that we're talking about and, and putting that together. Basically, once we have enough, enough groups, we can actually say, okay, now let's tackle a bigger project. So I was thinking of getting about 12 different universities aligned, uh, which we're working on right now. And then we can s say, okay, what is a common interest here of a project that we can have continuity on? So, so what we'd like to propose is setting up uh, collaborations with existing clubs but ideally forming OSE chapters so that we have a good presence around around the globe and people that c collaborate for larger projects um, but in the meantime I mean there's other things what we can do just to just to let you know what we can offer is things like teaching people hands-on skills we run various workshops where one thing is the called the open source microfactory steam camp where you can get to build your own 3D printer in one day, and then you can use that printer to make other machines, such as a pen plotter, CNC hole drill, and use that to prototype other tools. So basically a, 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 an immersion course where you learn to go from ideas to rapid prototyping and, and collaboration with a larger team. So that's, that's what we do. And we can act, we're, the way we operate is uh, we call it distributive enterprise, but what we do is we, we can train individuals to actually run the workshops. Like, for example, if a, if a chapter wants to run workshops for the outside public or produce 3D printers, we, we share all our economic blueprints as well. So we both develop products and develop the enterprise around them. So the specific enterprises that we have right now is, is production of 3D printers or the production of the immersion uh, steam camps. But I, I don't know if any of this is interesting to you. So maybe you can tell me what you would see as some possibilities. Um, you know, so you know, one one thing that I you know, want to throw out is, uh, you know, um, we are a university, so we're you know we we don't have a lot of uh, 
funds to, to you know to go out and pursue to pay other people to do things. So that mm -hmm. you know, so that that's one thing we have to be careful of. Um, so we collaboration is great, <laughs> um, and, and I'm, I'm I'm really hoping that we can, we can get something. Uh, we do have a, actually a maker space here, mm -hmm. um, which has you know 3D printers, and and it it may be came to them as well. Uh, you know, if if we can kind of build up a, a collaboration between ourselves. Um, you know, we, we do have other, we do have things like uh, 3D printers here. We do have, uh, you know, maker spaces. Um, so, you know, all of that is, is something that we can, that we can kind of approach. You know, I, I'm not exactly sure what a collaboration would look like. We are trying, you know, we, we have a, a really good in, uh, penetration in the CS department. Um, you know, we have 200 students a semester. Um, we have, I think, on the order of, uh, 12 to 1400 students total in the CS program. So over the course of their four years here, you know, we get uh, a large number of CS students coming through the mm -hmm. program. Yeah. Um, we do actually, we're, we're trying very hard to become uh, less a software place and more of a, uh, um, bring in more, a more diverse. We are actually interested in, in reaching out to our ECSCs more um, we're seeing that now we have you know four or five ECSCs in the in the, the class this semester. Uh, we're, you know we're, we try to reach out to some of our uh, more RPI has a is, is a very tech oriented company or gob sorry uh, a college uh, university, uh, but we we do have some uh, uh, humanities and some softer sciences. Uh, so we're trying to reach out to those people as well. So so part of you know what we have is is uh, is we're trying to broaden our our uh, our student base and, and we think that projects who incorporate a more diverse population from the standpoint of you know not just technical uh people um but but uh uh you know artistic and and uh and hardware and other you know those types of disciplines as well are, are actually stronger groups um you know i had hoped to be able to invite you to come down um and we can talk about what that would look like, uh, but things have changed in, uh, since, since I originally uh, emailed you. Uh, RPI is essentially, at least through the end of March, uh, we're close to New York City. Um, there have been a couple of cases of, uh, of uh, COVID um, in, in, the, in oh, an adjacent county. So, so yeah, we're not having any, as far as I know, we're not allowing any external speakers. And in fact, I'm going to be delivering lectures remotely for the next, at least through the oh, end of wow. March. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I, I think, you know, one thing I would love to do is, is have you come and, and talk to us. You know, your, your TED talk was really nice. It was well done. Um, it's, it's one of the things I'd like to have my students thinking about. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I again, I would love to take the plans and build myself a tractor. My mm -hmm. wife probably would not feel that way. Mm -hmm. um, she, I, I do too many uh, uh, weird projects as it is. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, you know, so, so, you know, I think that that would be a great way to, to, to kind of start is to have you, you know, come on campus and talk to the students and, and, and you know, meet with meet with me. I can introduce you to the people at the Forge and our manufacturing group. Huh. Uh, that's yeah. that's the, 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 the makerspace. Um, and then we could kind of talk about how how we could go out. Certainly a student group, if we can get sufficient student interest, you know, a student group uh, would certainly be a, be a possibility. And I can see how we could actually work with that as part of uh, as part of Arcos as well, so you know there's there's I think mm -hmm. I, th I would like to think that this is the first conversation that that, yeah. we're, that we're having, not necessarily a, a last one. But I, I'm you know I'm not exactly sure. I wanted to talk to you and see what your thoughts were, and uh, you know yeah kind of well, kind of use this as a, as a jumping off point. Yeah, no, that's a, that's the right direction. The thing is, what I connect to is the idea of getting all the other other departments involved. For us, that means um, everything else, including business, art. I mean, there's marketing, there's there's architecture, there's engineering, there's computer science. But what we talk about is if we're talking about solving various pressing world issues, technology is only a part of that, and then getting that out to the public for consumption or mainstreaming that that's that takes care takes a much bigger 
process. So what we'd like to do is set up a club which is explicitly, this is not a technology club, this is an open source ecology club. It includes everything because society is made up of a lot of different sectors that part of our work is, okay, how do we have people talk together beyond the disciplines to make better solutions? So definitely we want to reach out um, and do something that invites everybody. If you're interest, in, open to, uh, like, yeah, I mean, I, I could see one direction where we have, um, say, I would get invited to come over. We can talk about if there's real interest in having a couple of permanent faculty people that would be as the mentors for the club and then see if there's interested students. Uh, so ideally, we would have some student stakeholder and definitely the, the staff stakeholder, like yourself, would be a... Uh, you know that's a perfect thing you're expressing initial interest so that's a positive thing but for content like you mentioned about continuity yeah that's a big deal so we definitely want to have the faculty advisor so that this thing continues when the students graduate um, so what's um would you be interested in being that advisor or do you think we can find do you have any other people at the school who might have heard about this work or have you talked to anybody about this yet or no uh, you're uh this is uh like i said i'm kind of using this as a as a jumping yeah. off point to kind of think of where yeah. where we want to start uh, i i'm potentially interested in being the advisor it would it would matter you know part of it would be would, would matter just on uh uh on uh, course load right now i've got a, a fairly substantial course load and it would matter a little bit how much we can kind of uh uh, uh, leverage Arcos, um, you know, if, if, if I could leverage the Arcos stuff quite a bit as we, as we kind of work through this, uh, then it's something I'm already doing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, certainly a potential there. Um, no, I haven't really, you know, talked to anybody else about this yet. I just, you know, kind of got your message. Yeah. Um, in fact, I wanted to talk to you before I, before I, um, brought the students in as well, although I can, uh, you know, that's certainly uh, right now is, is probably a uh, mattermost message away. But uh, yeah, but yeah, that just kind of like I said, we're just kind of working things through and and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I hear what, what you. kind of uh, interact regarding leveraging Arcos. Do you have the freedom to say? Okay, students, can you work on this problem, or or do students completely select on their own? So the students, uh, sorry, I'm starting up the coffee maker. Uh, the students, typically, we we uh, give the students a lot of freedom, um, and that's that's all. I've always been well. I've been in charge for about two years now, um, but. It's certainly something that we've been kind of looking at is is whether we want to uh, circumscribe a little more the types of projects. You know, generally once we get a project started, we have sort of keeping it running. You know, over multiple cycles of students. Um, Yaks has run for about ten years. Uh, uh, Submitty has run for six, I think. Um, you know, so so once we get a project started, where we have uh, issues is in getting things started up to begin with, or getting that initial student interest. Um, but we are we are we are interested in exploring ways of of, um, of making that work. It's, it's yeah. something that I've been on my mind. It just hasn't, you know, it's different than what we're doing it now, but it's not so far out there that we couldn't that we couldn't make some effort well i mean software is an inherent part to a lot of our stuff i could think immediately of say autonomous tractors where we have tractors we need automation on them uh, automatic control so there's and there's of course ross you've heard of ross robotic operating system um have you have you heard of that yeah actually uh, i'm uh, yeah i, I uh Actually, um, it's not it's not using Ross, but I am actually a mentor for first for first robotics team. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm really I'm familiar with Ross and uh, right. Yeah. So I mean, immediately I can see. Okay, so if you have a project, you've got hardware, you got software, you got enterprise, uh, you got marketing and 
all of that stuff that's because we talk about technology for good but also people making a livelihood so creating a, a pattern where yep. we all together develop a collaborative way as opposed to a proprietary way of de developing products in general which has happened in software but not for hardware so yeah we have a good relationship yeah. with our with our business group here as well i mean they're, they're some of the the uh the most involved faculty outside of the cs department mm -hmm. um, for precisely that reason so. yeah yep and then there's writing there's communications, um, uh, all of that. Um, but I mean, I'm sure we can come up with something interesting that would be compelling to a lot of stakeholders. And that's the thing, like we want to select a project that is comprehensive and then we can divvy it up according to a collaboration architecture across many universities to make it happen. And that could be really compelling because you're also teaching about the, the collaborative aspects of working on a much larger vision. So yeah. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, I could uh, definitely see some possibilities. So, yep. so hopefully, let me just uh, throw this out. Uh, I, mm -hmm. This summer, I'm going to be running our coast again. We we actually have a summer semester, um, and I'm going to be running it then. It might be interesting to uh, to to kind of brainstorm uh, uh, a, a small, you know, relatively small chunk project. Uh, that we could try to uh, to get student involvement with. Okay. Um, um, well, over the summer, I'm, I'm gonna because it's summer. That's the only thing I need to teach is Arcos. So okay. you know, it might be interesting to to kind of come up with a, with an initial proof of concept uh, application that we could uh, that we kind of work on. It'll be all sophomores or, or primarily, uh, you know, actually the rising juniors. Um, you know, mm -hmm. so just just completed soft people who just completed their sophomore year um and i'll have more hands-on you know I, I don't i won't have 200 students i'll have uh closer to 30 to 40. okay uh and do you know do you have any idea for what the project is right now no or i mean as as what you know, right, now we would normally, uh, right now we would normally uh we would normally uh you know let them do the same selection process uh, what I'm at, what I'm thinking is, if there is something that would be, that would tie in with some of your work, that might, yeah, uh, that might be a candidate for for, you know, starting a, an initial collaboration. That'd be great. Oh, so how does that work? So would would you want me to to write a project proposal? Okay, this is uh, this is what we need because actually there's a very clear tie-in. This summer we're doing a summer of extreme design build, which is three months of immersion, hands-on builds and enterprise training now we are building the tractors in the second month so that's going to be july and we were planning on doing a simple automated controller like we've done for example a remote controller just a simple joystick uh yeah arduino yeah. based remote controller and starting with that actually testing it or improving that we actually built that but we actually never tested it and then of course there's mm -hmm. much much to be done on augmenting that for like auto control and stuff like that um, yeah so i mean that I, I could propose that immediately as a thing that would completely uh fit yeah, our that, needs and that, that, that might be yeah what well, yeah so uh it doesn't have to be a you know a full-fledged mm -hmm. proposal to get started with yeah, yeah um that that sounds like it would be a it would be a a, a good a good tie-in um, and we could kind of talk about how we, you know, how we go about doing that remotely, um, you know, because it will be, a, you know, the, the development will have to be on campus. Yeah. Um, they're they're actually attending classes. When is the summer um, school for you? I'm sorry. When is what are the dates of your summer school? Somewhere around, I I don't have them exactly, but it's like May twentieth to August twentieth with a with a break in the middle. Uh huh. So you you have quarters. No, we well, we have uh, we have semesters, but we're the, the president of the, the college came up with a new initiative called Summer Arch, mm. and so we run we we actually run three semesters now, um, fall, spring, and uh, and summer, and summer is slightly shorter, and it's primarily targeting rising juniors. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, now. What's what are the practical uh, implications here? So would the like for example our project would be on a menu of projects that the students can select from, or how does that work? Can you tell me a little more? Yeah, that's that's essentially 
that's essentially it. We we have a, a pitch day where we have where we have people pitch projects, uh, and then we have what we call speed dating, where all the projects that have been pitched and all the students who don't have projects get together and kind of mm-hmm. and kind of uh, self select. Mm-hmm. Um, what I would probably like to do is find out, you know, ahead of time, kind of key up, see if I can get some students actually interested ahead of time. Um, so try to try to uh, reach out to some of our our students who will be t- get them to pre buy in to to this um, yeah. essentially. Yeah. You know that would you know but but that would you know then they would be responsible for for pitching and and uh, bringing you know additional students into the project if we needed them. Um, okay. Okay. That sounds good. And how many just to. T- find out a little more how many projects are going to be selected for the summer and how many so you've got there about 30 to 40 be, students uh, and there's other yeah, there'll probably, just... yeah. there probably be about eight um okay depending on how many students we have uh, we generally have a, you know i try to get four to six students per project we find that works pretty good um but there's always a couple that want to go one or two um so you know so so we'll probably have about eight projects this semester this summer Eight projects with four, four to six students. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And on how average. many? And his, historically, how many have selected? Hey, Marcin, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I need to. Uh, I, uh, you need to go. Select. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I. There's an emergency meeting on on how we're going to do the, the uh, web. Delivery of content. Okay. Uh, that, okay. Again, it got scheduled since. since it got scheduled yesterday. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. No problem. So let's. So, so I have, I have a little short, but let, let's uh, let's plan a follow up talk, follow up discussion. Is that okay? I'm, I'm again. I'm, I apologize. Yeah. I. Not a problem. I, uh, let's let's continue on email here. I'm going away to New Zealand to run a steam camp there this okay. week, so I'm going to be back next week. But let's okay. let's continue the discussion on, uh, just over email yeah. to follow up on this. That that's great. Yeah, and I, I apologize. I I had intended that to have at least an hour to talk. Um, but, uh, <laughs> okay, no problem. And, and does the remote control tractor sound interesting to you? Very interesting. It actually hits something that I was, that I've been trying to, to kind of push for, which is, you know, uh, I've done, uh, uh, medical image exploitation and robotics have been kind of two of my areas of research and, uh, or, or activity. And, and I'm looking for projects that kind of hit that mark as well so oh, i think that, that would actually be a good thing okay excellent excellent so let's continue on on email and thank you for taking the time excellent yeah thank you very much i appreciate like i said i'm i apologize for the uh for having to cut to cut out um but uh <laughs> yeah yeah no problem no problem we'll we'll continue yeah. on the email excellent. all right we'll, we'll talk to you later thank you Wes, or an email yep mm-hmm. sounds great Bye-bye. Bye.